Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Got a very fascinating uh, prophetic broadcast tonight. I call it prophetic. It's more of a Bible parallel. I wanted to share with you guys. I think you're going to find this very fascinating indeed. It is what we call a prophetic segment of Israeli News Live. Uh, and so we want to get right into this with you, those of you that really enjoy looking at these things. Hillary Clinton, Julian Assange, events paralleled in the Bible. Yes, believe it or not, that is the case. Now, and we're going to go in right into the story about Jezebel. You'll be finding this over in First and Second Kings. And some of you might say, well, Brother Steve, you've always said that, that Rome is a type of Jezebel. And yes, that is true as well. But Scripture often has compound fulfillments and even a compound way of looking at those revelations. In this case here, many times it's parallels we find in the Bible. We often find the parallel of other events that happen in there. And as the old saying goes, you know, a man may die, but that spirit that was upon that man lives on. Even you know, as far as whatever evil spirit that controlled him. In the case of Jezebel, Jezebel clearly is a type of Rome today. And I've said before, Ahab is a type of Shimon Perez who married Jezebel and brought idolatry into Israel by bringing the Vatican, the Catholic Church, inside of Israel. But in tonight's message, I'm going to share with you how Hillary Clinton herself and her leaked emails were actually paralleled in the Bible. Even Julian Assange himself paralleled in scriptures, very ironically so. All right, so we're going to look at that. And I want to first start off by taking you to the book of Revelation. The words of Yeshua himself, Jesus, is recorded by St. John the Divine that met him on the Isle of Patmos that uh, shows that Jezebel is a type of the Church of Rome and Hillary Clinton. Let me show you, though. I know thy works and charity and service and faith, thy patience, thy works, and the last to be more than first. That can easily be the believers, both globally and as well as American Christians of today. Right? Notwithstanding, I have a few things against you because you suffer that woman Jezebel. And again, the parallels on both sides. The Christians around the world have allowed the Catholic Church, not the Catholic people, but the, but the system itself. Even Catholics, by the way, are opposed to the, uh, to the, uh, to the nomination of uh, uh, Pope Francis. They're against him as the Pope of Rome. They, they, they say that he's the devil in the, in, in the Vatican. All kinds of things have been against him, but nonetheless, he's there. And God is not happy that the people allow Jezebel to rise to power. Neither is he allowed in parallel of the Christians today in America to allow the Clintons to, uh, to rise to power. Not to mention to power as possibly President Hillary herself. Ahab, in this case, is not Shimon Perez, but is a clear type of Bill Clinton. He just was the good old boy, but it was Hillary that was pushing all the buttons in the background. When we look at the next part, though, which is in blue here on your screen, which calleth herself a prophetess, that's clearly tied to Rome, not to Hillary herself. But I do know that Hillary's into all kinds of witchcraft. Is that not so? So in a way there, yeah, she probably considers herself that as well. To teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication, to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And yes, yeah, she's into idol worship, witchcraft, and everything else you can Im Im imagine. And even those emails have definitely brought that up to to. to or before her uh, once again. I gave her space to repent of her fornications, and she repented not. No doubt God has given Hillary space to repent as well, just as the Catholic Church, but there has been no repentance. All right, let's move on. Now, I'm focusing tonight on the leaked emails. This is where I saw that parallel laying in there. I've already seen people speak about, well, Hillary is just like Jezebel. Okay, yes, I understand that. But I wanted to see if she's a type of Jezebel, what type does she really play? 
Jezebel, in the case of Israel and the Catholic Church, Ahab, Shimon Perez, brought idolatry back into Israel by allowing the Catholic Church the power over Israel once again. And yes, that's what's happening. And yes, they're going to build a third temple. And yes, somebody's going to sit on that seat and it's probably going to be the Pope of Rome. They've already given him an official seat at King David's tomb. That's altogether different. Now we're focusing on that parallel. I keep stressing that, and I know you guys are okay, Steve, we got it, we got it, we got it, okay. But I have to stress it because I want to make sure you understand it's compound revelation laying in Scripture in many cases, and even compound fulfillment. All right, but looking at our emails, here's one. This is just dealing with Israel. They, they'd got some leaked emails. This happened back in December of 2011, and, uh, or excuse me, the email was from 2011 from Thomas Pickering. Uh, Harad's carried the story on this, and this is where her aide is encouraging her to, um, as it says here, proposes that the U.S. somehow uh, uh, super, superstitiously back a widespread Palestinian protest movement. Well, sure. That's exactly what he wanted, and of course, Hillary got that from more than one aide as well, just showing you the inside workings. Now, Hillary's emails in itself has already revealed all kinds of evils that have gone on, and uh, everything from even from uh, suggesting that this wasn't in an email, but this was blurted out uh, that some people leaked out about her that, you know, why don't we just drone Assange? Why can't we just drone this guy? Uh, so, very much, she's got a background that, like a black widow, I guess you would say, follows a path of death. Uh, and it's the fact that, we deal, that we're dealing with emails, these leaked emails. And, and I didn't want to go into splattering all of our leaked emails here. I just wanted to bring out some case and points here, especially when it deals with Israel. And the reason being is because Hillary, like a type of Jezebel, Jezebel also was writing letters in order to have a power change and guess what israel all right let's look at it from a biblical standpoint real quick and then i think you'll get more of the idea where i'm going hillary followed jezebel's footsteps first kings uh, chapter 21 verse 5 but jezebel his wife came to him and said unto him why is thy spirit so sad that thou that you that you eat no bread i'm kind of paraphrase as we go here mainly because i know the thousand those and stuff like that is not easy for everybody all right, so she's asking her husband, Ahab, why is he eating? He's sad. He goes, he goes, he wanted to buy Naboth's field, and Naboth wouldn't allow it. He didn't want to do it. And so Jezebel, she takes over the situation. Oh, he doesn't want to give you the field? No problem. Leave it up to me. How many news articles have we seen that this is the way it goes on in Bill and Hillary's life? Bill was a little bit more uh, relaxed, didn't want to get involved as much, but Hillary, they said, ran everything, especially once he got into the White House. Watch here. And he said unto her, Because I've spoken to Naboth the Je Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else if it pleases you, I will give you another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give you my vineyard. And Jezebel his wife said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread, and let thine heart be merry. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. And you know, it's kind of funny. Pretty much America does run Israel today. Um, I know as Jewish people, we would love to think that we govern our own affairs. And no doubt, even like when uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu was first elected as Prime Minister, I always said back then, it'll never work. I even told a, a lady that I met, an Israeli lady who was an air, airline stewardess, I said, I'm sorry, it'll not work. As much as he's talking about being a, a champion for Israel, we've got the prophecy of Micah where God says to Micah, is there no king in thee? You know, has your counselor perished? Chapter 4, that is. And God is bringing a reminder to Israel, we left God when we rejected uh, 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 the prophet Samuel being God's way of dealing with his people. And we wanted a king and be like the rest of the world. Well, we got a king. We ended up getting a good one. Saul wasn't so great, but David ended up being a godly king. But then we ended up with Ahab on the throne. And that's where your king ends up leading you. And so I knew that 
Prime Minister Netanyahu, anointed or not by Mike Evans, he still would not work as a king of Israel because that's not God's way of doing it. God's got to send Elijah. God's got to send Moses. And I was found out recently, there is a group of Karite Jews that are looking for both Moses and Elijah to return. Imagine that one for a moment. By the way, this is going to go in that direction. Wait and see. Fascinating. Fascinating scriptures here. All right, so the United States, unfortunately, does have a lot of say-so on Israel, and they hold the money and the power and everything else over Israel's head and the Rothschilds that help get the country going. Now, in regardless of the evil side of the Zionist movement through the Rothschilds, not the not the spiritual Zionism. I'm for spiritual Zionism. That's the that's the Orthodox Jewish people that wanted to return to their homeland, wanting to see Messiah. All for my people for this. All for going home for that. But go home in peace. Don't go home and try to kill all of the neighbors off as a result. Okay? And and, and you gotta remember, Palestinians, all of them are being incited to violence, as we see in Hillary Clinton's email. Incite them to protest against the people. So they're incited to violence against Israel to cause tension on both sides. Sound familiar? John Stockwell, former CIA director of, uh, of operations of America, saying that American CIA goes in, topples governments, and the way he said they do it is they put two, two extreme groups at, at each other's throats in the country, and that causes all the fighting, and of course all the innocent people die in the process. And that's how the innocent Israelis have died in the process. And I know, yes, Palestinians have been killed in the wake of this as well. The innocent Palestinians are those that are getting bombed as Israel drops the bombs down in Gaza and stuff, and it causes a lot of innocent civilian deaths as a result. All right? So there is death on both sides. Okay? Well, let's get back. Sorry, I don't want to get too far off this. First Kings 21, 8. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name. Well, what do you know? They had an email system all the way back there in the times of Ahab and Jezebel. Well, you know what I mean. Not an email system, but they definitely were sending letters, right? Now watch this. And sealed them with his seal and sent the letters unto the elders and the nobles that were in his city dwelling with Naboth. Why do we see this as far as it being in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal? Because Hillary Clinton was using a state-run government email, but also using her private server as well. You see how the, the parallel of the scripture and prophecy here, Jezebel was using a state-ran letter system. Hillary also, both using state-ran and also a private server. That's where they got angry with her is because her private server is what put at risk human beings, okay? such as Mr. Stevens, who was killed in the, in the attack in Benghazi, all right? But it's just that little key word there, all right? And then it says on, it goes on to say there, uh, dwelling with Naboth, all right? So she wrote the letters unto the elders of the nobles that were in his city, dwelling with Naboth. And she wrote in the letter saying, proclaim a fast and set Naboth on high among the people. Her letters were setting people up. Just like Hillary Clinton's emails. Her leaked emails have shown how she has set people up, put people in harm's way, etc. All right? This is what we're seeing. Look here. Good example, though, of now, this is not about the leaked emails, but we have to remember in the case with Jezebel, Jezebel was setting up Naboth to have him killed, murdered. Isn't that something that happened also in the Clintons? At least the suspicion, I should say. As we have here, 90 suspicious deaths of individuals close to Bill Clinton, 81 while president. Let me just share some of these with you. Ron Brown, murdered, driving by, drive by shooting, day after Ron Brown's plane, cra plane crashed. Okay, uh, that was Ron Brown's lawyer, sorry. Ron Brown, Secretary of Commerce, plane crashed. Okay, he died in that. Threatened Clinton with a not give, uh, not going down alone. U.S. said no black box was uh, was on this government plane, though Croatian and French TV show teams pulling pulling one out. All right, 34 passengers plane crash on a plane with Brown. A stewardess was rescued several hours after the crash alive. She died en route to the hospital from blood loss due to a cut femoral artery sustained in the crash. You know, it's just talking about suspicious things that happen around these people, right? Bill Shelton, although 
shot himself at a graveside of uh, finance. Kathy Ferguson, who died the month before, also from suicide. Shelton was an ARC state trooper who had vocally been proclaiming that his uh, fiance had not committed suicide. I'm sorry, I said graveside at the finance. No, it's fiance. I didn't see it. Sorry. Uh, but anyway, that she did not commit suicide, allegedly shot himself behind the left ear. So he knows she didn't commit suicide, and next thing you know, she, he commits suicide. Of course, Kathy Ferguson, uh, uh, ex of ARC trooper Danny Ferguson, engaged to trooper Bill Shelton. Danny Ferguson allegedly escorted Paula Jones to Clinton's hotel room, and Kathy was vocal about her knowledge in the case and was, was, to be able, was able to corroborate a witness for Paula Jones in her sexual harassment case against Clinton. Allegedly shot herself behind the left ear. Hmm... Attorney for, for uh, Dan Laster, he supposedly committed suicide, allegedly jumped out of the building, killing himself. He represented Dan Laster, a close friend of Bill Clinton, who was indicted on drug charges and sent to prison. Ronald Rogers, plane crash, Arkansas dinner, de dentist for Clintons, killed on, on one on way to interview with a London Sunday Telegraph reporter to reveal information. Hmm, weird, isn't it? All these deaths here. All right, Paula Grover, speech interpreter for the deaf for Bill Clinton, killed in a car accident with no witnesses, traveled extensively with Clinton from 1978 until her death. Paul Tooley, he was murdered, Democratic National Committee director, found dead in a hotel, dear friend of Clinton and trusted advisor, authored key strategies for Clinton of the Democratic Party. Victor Razor, plane crash. You know, isn't it funny that these people, I mean, they, they've had 90 people die that they know personally with all kinds of strange deaths. How many people do you know that had all these kind of strange deaths that you knew in your life? It's just too weird, guys. It's just too weird. Now, the whole point about this here is that it's not just the fact that, that Jezebel was setting up Nabob for his death, but Jezebel was involved in the death of all the prophets as well. Okay, remember that? She was killing off the prophets of God. In this case here, here's what the irony is in the parallel. Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton, they were working about knocking off all the people that could give the information about them and bring them down. Basically like a prophet. They knew the inside story that nobody else knew. And so like a type of the prophets, they were being murdered to keep their mouths shut so they couldn't prophesy about the Clintons. Well, not in this case. They'd be revealing the information, not so much prophesying. Just trying to get that to make, a, make the parallel connection. All right, 1 Kings 21.10. And set two men, sons of Belial, before him to bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king, and then carry him out and stone him that he may die. They first were setting up Naboth like he was going to be, you know, some wonderful guy. You know, Naboth, wow, he's put him up on a high place. Then they bring out two false witnesses. Does that story sound familiar with the Clinton case? Sure it does. Hillary, they also always made sure they had plenty of false witnesses there to testify and to bring the next guy down. That's another issue that goes on around her, right? All right, 1 King 21, 11, and the men of the city, even the elders of the nobles who were the inhabitants in, in his city did, did as Jezebel had sent unto them. And it was written in the letters which she had sent to the, unto them. Hmm, we know that too, don't we? Hillary Clinton's got all kinds of those emails that are revealing things that they were doing and the connections she had with the different people and the evils that they were doing, right? I mean, this is the most incredible parallel I have ever seen in my life to that of Hillary Clinton and Jezebel of all these thousands of years ago, right? They proclaimed a fast and set Naboth on high among the people and there came unto them men, children of Belial, and set before him and the men... Um, uh, Belial witnessed against him, even against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme God and the king. Then they carried forth out of the city, stoned him with stones that he died. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth is stoned and is dead. That kind of reminded me of something that was really kind of a creepy type thing that Newswire put out on September 7, 2016. Leaked Benghazi email proves Hillary Clinton killed Chris Stevens. Now, I can't say that she killed Chris Stevens, but what they are saying by this is that they believe that because she was not using a government secured server, that her emails could have been hacked and therefore put Chris Stevens at risk. 
Now, you can see on the screen here the email that they're speaking about here that was part of the leaked emails. But let me just show you, though, what they say in here, because it basically tells what the letter says as well. The Benghazi investigation emails released on Monday show that Hillary gave the precise location of Chris Stevens a total of five times via her unsecured email server, which terrorists may have then intercepted. So there, that is still an allegation. You cannot say she killed Chris Stevens. It's an allegation, you know, but there's a lot of evidence that you know, besides even the email and stuff like that, there's other issues as well. And I realize that, so I'm not belittling this, but I also want to make sure that we clarify our words and not just accuse without the right way of going about it. Subject line, Chris Smith. Yes, Chris was one of the Americans that was also killed. Of course, Chris Smith was not his name, but that's the point about this article. But it shows that the wrong name remained in the email chain. No one corrected it, and no one can argue that they were focused on the situation because if they truly were, they would have never have revealed his location five separate times in an unsecured email. All right, that was what they're saying in this issue here. The point is, in relation to Jezebel, is that yes, people were being set up, and clearly, for their demise. Now, Hillary is guilty of killing the prophets, as I said, those who would expose the Clintons. Look at this here. First, uh, Second Kings chapter 9, 7, And thou shalt smite the house of Ahab, thy master, that I may avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord at the hand of Jezebel. Now God is getting ready to bring vengeance upon Jezebel for the evils that she has done. And in modern times, the same thing is happening with Hillary Clinton today. Not that she's going, you know, not that there is a physical death out to get her, uh, but her very email leaks is written right here in the story of Jezebel. Watch what happens here. Verse 8, for the whole house of Ahab shall perish, and I will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Israel. And I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Basha, the son of Hiah. And the dog shall eat Jezebel in the portion of Jezreel, and there shall be none to bury her. And he opened the door and fled. That's when the prophet ran in there and gave this, um, uh, this story, uh, Elijah, about what was going to happen to Jezebel, prophesying about it, right? Now, let's look at the parallels to Hillary Clinton in this case here. Now, here's where we come up with Julian Assange. It's like the eunuch standing in the window. Get a good picture of this. Now, he's on the balcony. I know it's actually a door, but he's on the balcony there uh, on the Ecuadorian uh, uh, embassy inside of Great Britain there. But isn't it strange that right here from this particular balcony, door, window, it's a glass door, so it's still like a window, you know, a chalon in Hebrew, a window. But think of that image there, and then think of what it says here in 2 Kings 9, 30 on down to verse 33. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it. And she painted her face and tied her head and looked out a window. And as Jehu entered in at the gate, she said, Had Zimri peace? Who slew his master? And he lifted up his face to the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? And there looked out to him two or three eunuchs, and he said, Throw her down. So they threw her down, and some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall and the horses, and, and he trode her underfoot. In other words, the horses trampled her underfoot. Now, what has happened to Hillary Clinton as a type of Jezebel today? This time around, the eunuchs, they threw her out the window when Julian Assange stood here on the Ecuadorian balcony here, standing here by the window here, and released and exposed the emails about Hillary Clinton through his organization, WikiLeaks. Hillary Clinton's leaked emails have been, have been the demise of Hillary Clinton and the entire Clinton family. So in today's world, it is not so much of killing someone when we look at the biblical prophecy here, but it is certainly they're being 
brought down. They have been thrown out the window, as we see with Julian Assange here, standing on the balcony of Ecuador, and as we see here in the case of Jezebel so many years ago, being thrown out the window herself by the eunuchs that were there, and now Julian Assange and by the way, he's not by himself in doing this. So yeah, they, isn't it interesting over here we see two or three. It's funny how that the, 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 the writing in the book of Kings never knew exactly how many were there. And still even today, no one really knows who all is working with Julian Assange. He's just the only guy in hiding. And yes, Hillary knows he's there and Hillary would love to put a stop to him. But she's the one that ends up being thrown out the window. All right. So who is Jehu, by the way? When we look at Jehu, who is Jehu do, and, and, and does the prophecy reveal the times that we're living in? Or does this parallel, not so much a prophecy, but does the parallel of what we're seeing here in the Bible about Jezebel, Jehu, Elijah, and even Elisha, is there something there that we can see from this picture of what time are we living in this season. Let's take a look at 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 16, where we find out about Jehu. By the way, there is Jehu the prophet, but he's not the son of Nimshi, so it's a different Jehu, and they are spoken about both in the book of Kings here, so you have to kind of be careful not to mix the two up. It says, And Jehu the son of Nimshi shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel, and Elisha the son of Shaphat of Abba, uh, Abu Mihola shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. So God is speaking directly to Elijah about this here. And he shall and it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Hazel shall Jehu slay, and him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Yet I have left me seven thousand in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. Baal, Balaam. Wow, Babylonian kingdom, right? So that's in there as well. So he departed thence and founded Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he went with the 12th, and Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. Now, 12 yoke of oxen is actually 24 ox, which kind of reminds me of the uh, of the 24 elders in Revelation, which types both the 12 patriarchs of Abraham, or, or you know Isaac's sons. It also represents the 12 apostles of Yeshua. There's your 12 and 12, all the sons of Jacob and all the apostles of Yeshua. Right now, look at this. So it's interesting. At this time, Elijah was going to take and anoint. Jehu is king over Israel. So there's coming a righteous man in Israel somewhere along the way. And that's what's going to change the tide in the Israeli politics that's coming along. And could uh, and I don't think Jehu is a type of the Messiah either. Not in this case here. Because notice what he says to Elijah. Elisha the son of Shaphat of, of Abimehola shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. So Elisha is a type of the coming one of the two witnesses, Elijah, <clears throat> in this case here. But, excuse me, Jehu, in verse 17, it says, And it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Hazal shall Jehu slay. And him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. So Jehu, who will be maybe a type of a righteous king in Israel, will not get everybody. It's going to be the two witnesses that follow thereafter that begin to bring about the final judgment. And that's what we see with Elisha. Yet I have left 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which I have not, that have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which have not kissed him. That's another fascinating prophecy. So when we look at Israel, and yes, we realize that Rothschild is heavily involved with the Vatican, bringing about a state for Israel, but they have maintained the strict control in the government with a bunch of wicked prime ministers that have come along. Not to say that there's not been good politicians in Israel, and not to say that we haven't maybe had one or two good prime ministers that were good, or maybe even start off being good and then get corrupted. But what's fascinating is that there's going to come one that's going to do a little better than what they've done from what it looks like here. But notice what he says. The ones, there's 7,000 have not bowed the knee to Baal. So there's some real honest-to-goodness Jewish people living in Israel today that are looking for the coming of the Messiah. They have a great heart. And don't bow down to Rome, right? Baal, Balaam, Babylon, 
right? Think of that, the Catholic Church. And every mouth which have not kissed him. Speaking about the mouths that have kissed him, well, all you got to do is look on your screen and behind you here, Pope Francis and Shimon Peres, pucker up, boy. That is, a, that is what the prophet, or that's what Elijah was talking about there when God spoke to him. Every mouth that hasn't kissed him. Who? Baal. There's your Baal. Baal, and also in the Hebrew language, is used for the word husband. What is the Catholic Church trying to do with Mechodeshet? They're trying to marry the vision. Daniel chapter 11 right there, where it says the sons of the lawless, son of a lawless, he is a son of Israel, tries to marry the vision. Daniel 9.24, where they try to bring in reconciliation for iniquity and that's what this guy right here, Baal, who wants to be the husband of Israel, is trying to bring in a false relationship. But anyway, Jezebel, of course, he also represents Jezebel too, and Ahab represents uh, Shimon Perez, and he's marrying into Jezebel here, bringing idolatry into Israel. So there is a multiple compound fulfillment. But this interesting fulfillment right here that we have here with Julian Assange being in the window like the eunuch and exposing Hillary Clinton's emails is basically what has thrown her out the window and brings down the entire Clinton clan. I'm Stephen Benoon. You are watching Israeli News Live. I hope it's been a blessing to you. Fascinating discovery, and that's not even the message that I have for Danun Institute. By the way, check out the link in below for Danun Institute. I have another message there. May end up having to bring that out tomorrow, but I've got one ready, and it is a powerhouse for those that are looking for that deeper walk with Yeshua. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live.